Hello Super Sentai fans and welcome back to Toku Topics. Today I'm finally taking a look at another Shoto Super Set. So it's been quite a while since I've taken a look at the Shoto Super Gokaidra sets, which were released in the fall of 2022, with the first set being the Core 5 and the second set being Silver and the Armor from Ten Gokaidra in the show. And this is one of the more recent Shoto Super Sets. I believe it's maybe not the most recent at this point. I think maybe there's been another one out since then. There's definitely been other ones on pre-order since then. Uh, but I did not expect my next set to be in my collection to be Chojin Sentai Live Man. So this set came out, I believe, in either late December 2022 or early January 2023. And I, like I said, did not expect this to be my next set here. So I am very, very happy with the Shoto Super line so far. They are very expensive sets, but they are also very, very cool sets. I adore these things a lot. And just because of their uniformity and what they bring to the table and all their accessories, I cannot recommend these things more. So these, of course, are very expensive, as I mentioned, being premium Bandai exclusives. Toe Collectibles always has these for like 120 a piece. I actually got mine off of Bai. I won it on, uh, on a Yahoo Japan auction for about 86, I think, something like that, which is still expensive, but a little bit cheaper than like that kind of Toe Collectibles price and such like that. And I have it here today to take a look at. My goal is to eventually have all the Shoto Super Sets and take a look at all of them on the channel. But next up here, we have live man which is one of my all-time favorite sentai suit designs especially 80s super sentai suit designs i love these guys here so let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the box here which i love this front image of the team there you do get black and green which were the additional members of the live man team after the core trio so it's very nice that all five of them are here in the set here they're not really considered like six rangers or extra rangers they are always considered part of the core team so it makes sense to have them all in one set you have all their animals behind them, so you have lion, bison, falcon, sai, and dolphin. Of course, you get the five of them at the top as well, which just looks so good with all their paint applications and details. You get the live man name there with the Shoto Super logo. They get the little live man logo right there. They fit in with, like, they're always, like, the same size box and everything. They have the same kind of style with the team pose on the front. I love the uniformity between these so, so much. On the side here, you have yellow, blue, black, and green, looking very, very cool with their little neon symbols behind them. And on the side here, red is all by himself, looking really good. And at the bottom, you just get a bunch of copyright stuff and all that kind of thing. And on the back, you see the crazy amount of accessories that we have with this here. So, as you can see, you do get their giant cannon, which is so cool. And there's a little stand for it and stuff as well. You also get the main trio's combined little arrow weapon there. And as you can see, there's a ton of accessories here. You get that stand for the bazooka, you get their sidearms, you get a ridiculous amount of swappable hands in there, you get sidearms and their pistol modes, holster modes, any kind of weapon you would expect the live man to have, this set has it, which is just one of the coolest things about Shoto Super is that you really get a very complete set of team figures here for the Sentai teams when they do these, and they have actually been making a pretty good amount of these so far. We probably have like like very 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 close to a third of super sentai out in this so far and i just i love it i love it so so much i just wish they were cheaper so now with these they are candy toy figures as you can see red falcon is already trying to fall out of there so they are all individually bagged and wrapped so we're going to take everybody out here so as you can see there's a lot of boxes in here and of course there are some stickers some uh, compared to like Super Sentai or to Yudo figures or to Kamarada Shoto figures or Soto figures. These are more like Kamarada Shoto figures, which are more fully painted. The figures themselves essentially are. However, most of those weapons are going to have stickers. And as you can see, we have a grand total. Oh, we have a grand total of 80 stickers in this set, which yikes. So I can definitely tell you this is going to be a multi day filmed video. You're going to see this part here now. And then a couple of days from now, when I'm done stickering all these things, is when we will resume this video. But the only actual stickers on the figures themselves, I believe, are their belts and their kind of, where is it, the, I think, don't they have, like, yeah, the little details on their boots there are also stickers. So, for the most part, the figures themselves are fully painted. I just grabbed Black Bison here first. So, as you can see, the detail in there is really, really good, even without the stickers. Fully painted helmets, the chests are fully painted. You just have to do the sticker around the belt, around the boots, and uh, also the cuffs around the arms as well. You get a ton of hands with them. So there is Black Bison. Here is Green Sai. 
We also get a ton of uh, hands with him. I almost said a ton of stickers with him, a ton of hands. Uh, over here we have Yellow Lion, which I think they did a really good job capturing that darker kind of color for the main. This turned out very good. There's all of his hands. Over here somewhere we have Blue Dolphin. So here is Blue Dolphin with all her hands. And then of course the leader himself, Red Falcon, with all of his hands and all of his details. So we'll take a closer look of all these figures once they're all stickered up. Uh, in here we have a ton of sprues with all their sidearms, so pistols and holsters and little like blades and stuff like that. I don't know the names of all of the lineman weapons to be honest, uh, but we have yellow and blues here which have a little bit of paint on them. Uh, and you can see this piece is a little separate there. So there is a little bit of detail on there already, but most of it's going to all come from the stickers. Over here, we have the giant cannon pieces, which you're going to have to fully assemble. But like, wow, look at that cannon already. That's already a huge piece. But that's going to be really nuts. Like that is, oh, I love that so much. So you have the whole assembly pieces for the cannon and the stand to go with it. It's over here alongside additional weapons as well like I think like uh, Red Falcon sword and just a couple of other little pieces are kind of in that baggie then of course we already took a look at the sticker sheet that's there and then here you have the little instruction manual for all the stickers which most of which are going to be repetitive because you have to do all of these like sidearms multiple times so that's why there are so many stickers because you get sets for everybody with all of those and then same thing with the little figures and stuff like that. And then kind of here's the assembly of the weapons and more stickers and kind of just where everything goes. So without further ado here, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of days. Honestly, it's going to take me a minute uh, to stick everything up here, build everything. And then we will come back and take a look at Shoto Super Live Man. All right, so it's been a little bit of time here. Actually, only about a day and a half or so since I recorded the first part of this video that you've already saw. And I have now finished stickering up all of the Shoto Super Live Man figures and we have the whole team right here and this already put in a Ziploc bag which I know is not the best way to store these but here's all of the accessories, all the hands, all the weapons, all of that stuff in a nice little Ziploc bag. Uh, and yeah, this took a while. It took me, uh, I would say probably about a grand total of like three and a half hours to do this which I know is a lot of time uh, but there was just a ton of stickers that got very repetitive uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring in these again uh, these are these sticker sheets now completely empty uh, and because I had said earlier where is the picture of it or the end of it uh, there was 80 stickers in this set and that is true but there was also a lot of duplicates like a lot of duplicate 57s or especially here when you had duplicate like 29s and 30s for like sword blades and stuff so well over 100 stickers i would have to say are in this set and so it definitely does take a very long amount of time but i think it's definitely worth it when you have the whole team here complete with all the accessories so i'm going to go ahead and look at each member of the team right now and kind of go over the articulation that shoto super offers and then we'll take a look at the accessories in a pretty good amount of detail and get some cool poses and everything before we kind of wrap it up here today. So let's go ahead and start with the team leader here, Red Falcon. So here is the fully completed Red Falcon figure, which looks very, very good. So as you can see, the only things that are not painted on here, the only things that were stickers, were all of the silver trim bits. So on the boots, on the cuffs, and on the belt. That's it. Everything else here was fully, fully painted in every way, which is the same thing for all of them. Uh, they are all the exact same stickers for the belt, cuffs, and boots, except for blue. Uh, since she has the female mold, hers was a little bit different. But yeah, here we go. A fully completed figure. So we'll go ahead and use Red Falcon as a basis for the articulation that these guys have, because while they're tiny, they're about four inch figures or so, they actually have a pretty good amount of range of articulation. So the head here, you can move it all the way around. It's on this joint, so you can go up and down. It has like this neck joint, that kind of just plugs in there. It's kind of a strange joint. I wouldn't necessarily call it a ball joint because like the neck is kind of on one, but then the head does have that kind of up and down all over the place kind of thing. So it's kind of a weird joint. You can kind of make him go like left to right kind of weird like that. So a little bit weird. Uh, here on the torso, you can, there's like technically two joints here. So you can move it there and you can technically rotate it like here a little bit, but then also here. It's kind of a strange one as well, and as you can see, they painted a little bit of the kind of, uh, not really a diamond pattern, but kind of where the point meets at the triangle there. 
So that way the paint, uh, you know, when you kind of have the, the chest movements a little bit, you can still have that paint be there, which is a nice touch. Uh, here on the arms, which definitely do look strange on the joint there, but you can rotate those all the way around. They can rotate up there at the top. Just a single little joint bend there at the elbows. And the hands are just pegged in, so I just picked a random set of holding hands for all these guys, but you get a ton of hands for everybody, so definitely not going to be missing out on any kind of poses with hands there. Uh, here you have a rotation there at the thigh. You can move back and forth there. Single jointed knees, but they go back pretty far. No rotation at the boots or anything, and then the feet are on a ball joint as well. So, you know, not like the most articulated figures in the world, but they still have a pretty good amount of range, I would say. And of course, to kind of complete the look here, you can give them the bilasers in their holster modes. So there are basically three different versions of the bilaser for everybody here. Uh, so you get the blaster mode of it, the sword mode of it, and then you get the holster mode for it as well. Uh, and so for this one, since it's in its holster, there's no stickers or anything like that. They're going to be covered by the holster. But there is this really weird tiny piece that you have to take off the little sprues and attach there at the back, which was kind of interesting, kind of a weird thing. And then you do get, and we'll get to it when we uh, open up the accessories bag here, but you also get unholstered versions uh, to where there's just an empty holster for you to plug in there. So that way if you have them holding the bilasers, you can also have them not be in their belt buckles, which is just such a nice little touch that just really makes this such a complete figure. And they do have a little peg port back there uh, because you can, if you wanted to, uh, plug Tamashii stand ports into here. If you take the little like clamps off, it would work. So there is that. And as you can see, the paint even continues onto the back here with the white lines and the little white kind of triangle kind of symbol. So they really make it so you have a very, very complete and very, very detailed Sentai suit in a little figure form. So let's get a look at the helmet. I said that kind of strange, a look at the helmet. So as you can see, the sculpting is phenomenal on these. Love the way that they've turned out. There's the Falcon symbol there. Really, really like that there. So. I'm not really going to spend a ton of time on the other ones because I did all the articulation and everything with red. So we'll go ahead and move on to Yellow Lion, which is pretty much the exact same figure, just done up in yellow, of course. You get the nice mane there painted in on the chest. And the helmet, once again, is sculpted very, very nicely. Not really any kind of scuffs or chipsing or anything like that, which is always nice to see, especially with how expensive these premium Bandai sets are. They got the lines paint or the little eyes painted on there. Really, like, no detail goes untouched there. I just, I think it's such a cool way to get a posable team of a Sentai. I just also do the fact that they are a little small, it's like a small scale, is that way it's kind of nice because you can, you know, it doesn't take up as much space to store all these guys as, like, a, I guess technically a Ranger Key display wouldn't either, but, like, you know, it's not as much as, like, a Lightning Collection, a six inch kind of figure display because they are smaller than the Lightning Collection by a considerable amount. So you can actually kind of fit more on your shelf and stuff like that, which I think is actually quite nice. So here at the female mold with Blue Dolphin, essentially the same amount of articulation. Uh, she obviously just has a different chest mold. Uh, there's also this skirt there, which does have, oh, there goes her arm. So that's another thing about these, that the joints are very easy to like pop off and take apart and everything, but you can just assemble everything very easily if things like arms pop off. But what I was trying to show off is that you do get the line in the skirt there. So you can still have a bit of that movement there. It does, of course, hinder it a little bit, but I'd say that it gets out of the way enough to make it not so bad. It's kind of this soft rubber. As you can see, it's kind of assembled in two pieces like that because moving it uh, does kind of make it separate into the two pieces, but it's very simple to just put it back together. You're not really going to be breaking these or anything. Let me go ahead and grab her arm, though. And here's her chest symbol, which also looks very good. And, of course, the helmet is captured perfectly down to, like, the even little silver, like, dots painted on the side, which is just... A crazy amount of detail for how small it is, you know? That's kind of just where the price is really coming in with these, is the, the amount of stuff that you get and the amount of detail that you can get out of these. And I mean, not even all of these have stickers. Every single one of the sets has stickers on the weapons for everything, but some Sentai suits don't have stickers on the actual figures. Like, for example, the Gokaiju sets I took a look at a couple months ago, those didn't have any stickers on the figures themselves. All the stickers were only on the accessories. So this is just one of those rare occasions where there are actually stickers on the figure, but at the very least, they're very minimal. So continuing the team here with the additional members, we have Black Bison, which is essentially the exact same figure as Red or Yellow, which of course you have the Bison symbol there, and the helmet, which is probably my favorite of the Live Man suit designs. I just kind of like how these captured the animals in kind of a 
sort of minimalistic way. They actually could kind of look a little bit more, I wouldn't say futuristic, but the suits kind of look a little bit more ahead of their time for being, what would this be, 1980, I want to say 19, like 84, I think? 88, actually, it might have been 88. No, 88 was Mask Man, so 89? Something like that. It was the like the mid to late 80s on oh, Live Man I'm sure I've probably put the year up on screen or something at this point, but for being 80s Sentai designs, I definitely do feel like they still have that 80s aesthetic and stuff, of course, that just kind of makes you think of, oh yeah, that's an 80s Sentai design and not a more modern one. But regardless, I think they still are really, really good. And here's the final member of the team, Green Sai, which as you can see, they have a little bit of a difference in the green coloring between the hands and the actual figure itself, which is kind of a little off-putting, kind of a little strange, but it's not the end of the world with that. Right, there is the green sire, or rhino is the English name for that animal, of course, there on the chest, and the helmet as well has the little horns painted and is sculpted very, very nicely. So that is it for the figures themselves, but as I showed off earlier on the box and in the Ziploc bag, any kind of weapon you would think of for a live man to have this set does include. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of the accessories. And here is everything you get in this set here, which, like I said, these sets are very, very comprehensive. I mean, you get a ton of accessories here. Like, I haven't seen Live Man personally, so technically I don't know like what would be like a missing accessory or a missing weapon. But pretty much anything I could possibly think of that I want a Live Man figure to have this live man set has which is just so so impressive and that's the case with all sort of uh, shoto super sets uh, they're all this comprehensive here so i'm gonna kind of do my best to kind of show off everything but there's a lot to show off here so as you can see we'll go ahead and start with just the hands basically so everybody has a whole little pile of hands here i think everybody gets a pretty equal amount of hands i think it's like about uh, what is it like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen probably fourteen hands so probably like seven sets of hands roughly ish for everybody uh, which i think is perfectly good i have everybody uh, just kind of in default holding hands i did put a tr uh, trigger finger hand on red falcon there for his right hand but pretty much everybody gets the same kind of hands so you get like karate chop split open hands uh, you get kind of like punching fan like hands where it's just like a fist holding hands trigger finger hands so pretty much any kind of hands you would want them to have for holding their swords or holding their blasters or just posing or whatever you want them to do they have so as i mentioned earlier in the video you do everybody gets a unholstered or a uh, empty holster version of the holster that the live laser goes into so you can swap those out accordingly and speaking of the laser here it is itself uh, which i will go ahead and zoom in on this so we can just kind of get a nice good detail of it so it is of course stickered on both sides but it does capture that detail super nice it does say live blaster laser or live something like that so <laughs> i'm pretty sure the wiki said it was like live laser live blaster so you do get that there so two stickers on both sides for all of them so that's you know part of the reason why the stickering takes so long is because that is what two sides times five so that's ten stickers just for covering the two of these or for the two sides of those and then you do get it in its blaster mode where it kind of extends out it has the full blade the blade is two stickers that wraps all the way around and then there are two stickers uh, for the kind of front plates there uh, so you get the full look so everybody has one of those in blaster and in holster mode and also or so three of those blaster mode holster mode and saber mode but of course they all have their unique weapons starting with i believe it would be this one is the falcon blade i think or it's the falcon saber i know that there's one of them called the saber one of them called the blade i will be putting the names up for everything here on the screen so we can know for sure so from what the wiki said this was the first sword i believe used by red falcon in the series but then it said something like in episode 23 i believe it gets destroyed or damaged or something and he moves on to his second weapon uh, the one that can actually combine with the other two but you do get this one here so it's really cool that they have that kind of feature and as you can see you had stickers all over the place so there was one here there was two for each of the sides of this and then two to make up the blade so a pretty good amount there and then here is the other weapon of his this is the one that can actually combine with yellow and blues to make the triple laser or something like that so there is that this one has kind of a full handle there so that's how you know it's the one that can, can actually combine with stuff but it's pretty much the same kind of thing as the one before it's just the wings are kind of folded down and it has that handle or kind of that handle grip there so there is that 
Now, one of my first little complaints, quote unquote, there's like probably two besides like stickers that I have uh, with the set. Because I mean, it's pretty nice, but like there's a little bit of some problems. And the first one was with this. Um, so this is the kind of condensed without a blade version of his sword. This is the one that you're going to actually use to combine the weapons together. Uh, but this one, the way it was on the sprue, uh, this is kind of my own fault, of course, but I accidentally kind of like was taking the handle off with it when I was removing it off the sprue. So as, as you can see, the plastic is warped there and it's already a little loose. So that handle is probably going to like snap off someday, uh, which I hope it doesn't happen soon. But just be wary of that. If you're taking it off the sprue, just be very, very careful. Uh, next, we have Blue's weapon, which has this super tiny Live Man logo right there that you have to attach and then put a sticker onto. Now, this is an additional piece that you use to combine the three weapons together. You don't have to, and you're not really supposed to keep it on the bow when she's holding it, but I just kind of stored it there uh, just so I don't lose it. So it gives it, oh, I dropped it. But I personally like to keep it there just so I don't lose that piece. So it can just kind of stay in there. Now, just kind of like red, yellow has two weapons. This is the first one, uh, which basically goes in like a hand peg. So you just remove a hand and you just slot this entire block into his arm. It's kind of this cool little lion blaster. So I think that's a good way to do it. So technically yellow has like an additional hand than everybody else because of that. Then you get his second weapon, the one that will actually combine into the little team blaster, which as you can see had a number of stickers there, 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 stuff like that, but it still looks quite good. Now Green Sai comes with multiple different versions of his boomerangs. So you get two of each of these uh, with a little hand peg for him to hold them. So that is a kind of nice thing to have. I'm not sure exactly which hands those would be that would use those. I'm yeah, okay, well, here we go. We have a hand with a peg. So there are some hands with a peg specifically for him to hold his boomerangs. So you get two of them where they're all straight out like that. So one, and where's the other one? I just saw it like a second ago. Two, so you get two of them like that. And then you get two of them where they are kind of bent in a more traditional boomerang shape and not focusing at all. And they each, all four of them have the little peg holes at the back and have stickers on both sides for all the detail. And then the final main personal weapon is Black's kind of staff there, which has a lot of stickers to get those silver details on both sides, but it's there and it does look pretty solid. So the next things to do would be to combine the weapons together into the different versions you can do. And of course we gotta take a look at this thing because this thing is probably the coolest accessory in the set. So the first team weapon that you can make is the triple bazooka, which combines the second weapons of yellow and red with blue's primary weapon. So there is a little instruction thing here. This is the whole sheet that you're using to put all the stickers all over the place. But down there, right there in the corner, it tells you how to combine it into the triple bazooka. So you take blue with that adapter piece that I took a look at a second ago, and there's a little peg at the bottom of yellows. So that is just going to clip in just like so quite easily and then you're going to take that small version of red sword uh, the one without the little like you know the, the one without the blade be careful because of the fact that mine is warped plastic there and it's just going to rest in there and there is the triple bazooka so pretty simple honestly uh, to combine them all and it's it's simple it works it's show accurate uh, right now i'm going to go ahead and put a picture up on screen right now of the core three holding this thing uh, which I think looks perfectly great. I'm really happy that whenever they're including these weapons that in the show can combine, you can actually combine them. It's just such a neat touch that once again just adds such a level of display and playability to the set that makes it like probably the ultimate live man figure set that you can get. And then the next thing we have is I believe, according to the wiki, called the Bio Motion Blaster, which is probably one of the most iconic team blasters I'd say from Super Sentai. Uh, this thing is massive. It's really, really big, and of course, it is comically large compared to one of the figures, but it's comically large in the show. I mean, it kind of like raises down. Uh, it, there's kind of like an iconic shot of the live man with this blaster, and it's a classic 80s Sentai team blaster thing that's just absurd and crazy, and I love it. So, so many stickers on this thing, though. Uh, there's a sticker there, stickers there for all the line detail. This really big pain of a sticker where there's one piece of it here, a piece of it there, a piece of it that goes across there, and a piece you have to get into this little divot, which I definitely did kind of mess up on in parts, which is significantly annoying. And there's pieces there and there, and then stickers back here for kind of the target lock and everything. 
uh, but it does look fantastic. Now, in the show, obviously there's not a giant stand that's going to support this thing uh, like the, this one is going to have. And this is where kind of my second like issue comes up with the set. I talked about first kind of the sprue problems with my red sword there. But this one is a little bit more of, you know, that was kind of my own fault by accidentally almost breaking it. Uh, this one is just kind of the overall design or way this was done, I'm not a huge, huge fan of. So first of all, you I don't even have it fully assembled because you're supposed to put in this front piece there. But it doesn't lock in very well, like whatsoever. It's not going to like fall out, but it's very loose in there. There's no, like you, you're kind of waiting for like a click or something. And it just doesn't happen. It just kind of rests in there. Now you do get this little extension piece there, so you can have it kind of condensed down or opened up, which is kind of a nice touch. But I'm just, this is not very stable whatsoever. And it's just kind of unfortunate. Now, my only other like complaint of this thing is that I, I get it why you have to include the stand because of the fact that you can't have these guys balancing with this. These figures are too light for this, which is, I mean, this is light too, but like it's still a lot of hefty plastic there. I would have liked for the stand to be casting clear plastic, uh, just so that way you don't have this kind of illusion broken up by this all white stand. And I know why they didn't do that, because this entire thing was cast in white plastic. And for the most part, these were cast in like their colors and also white plastic. You also had a ton of white plastic with all the weapons and everything. So in that regard, there was probably just not money in the budget or feasible for the factories to then also put in clear plastic for this set that would have just made it even more expensive. So I totally get why there isn't, uh, but it's just kind of one of those things that kind of makes it a little annoying or kind of breaks the illusion of this being as cool as it could be. So you do get two different posts for this. Uh, if you want the cannon to be a little lower or the cannon to be a little higher, depending on what you want. So we'll go ahead and take the lower adapter. You plug it in right there. And then you plug in the stand right there and that kind of has it basically at like chest level uh, for the live man or of course you can take the adapter the larger one and see there goes that front cannon piece again and you can clip that in there and have it kind of as it's sort of hovering down or something like that I think it's kind of the idea behind uh, the higher level higher level version of this one so Really cool touch nonetheless. I mean, it's, it's an impressive accessory to have them include with this. I'm sure it's definitely, I mean, it definitely is a must have uh, for your live man arsenal. And it's something that I think is super, super cool. And just like I did a second ago with the triple bazooka, here of course is a picture of these figures posed around side this thing, which is just so freaking awesome. And with that, that is going to do it for my review of the Shoto Super Live Man set. And wow, I mean, I am just blown away by this set of figures. I adore the accessories. I think the figures turned out great. As you can see, the posability here is very good. I'm trying to mimic the poses in this photo specifically for this kind of end little thing while they're on the turntable. And like, I mean, how could you not love this, right? Like, it, maybe if Live Man's not your thing, Shoto Super in general just has so many good sets that are all the same level of quality, in my opinion, to this one. And for any Super Sentai fan, especially if they've done your favorite season, these are a must have. Uh, they are probably the definitive Super Sentai figure line in my opinion, just because of how many options are already out there. And they seem popular enough that they're gonna keep making these. And the idea is that maybe someday we'll be able to have every single Sentai team in this figure line, which is so, such a cool idea to think about. So I love the Gokaiger sets, which be sure to check out the videos on those. I love this set as well. I have another one on the way already, not a full team, but I have another Shoto Super figure on the way to be taking a look at as I'm trying to kind of go through the whole backlog of these. And I can highly recommend this set for a number of reasons. So let me know down in the comments below, did you get this set for your Shoto Super collection or for your Live Man collection? What do you think of Shoto Super as a line? Which ones do you have? Which teams do you want to see them do? And what do you just kind of think about everything about this in general? I want to hear about it down in the comments below. Of course, until next time, you guys can follow me on Twitter at LivingRangerKey or Atlantic PR, and I will see you all later. To wrap up this video, I'd like to thank my $5 and above patrons, Jurassic Samurai, Maggot Alchemist, Robert Browning, Static Thunder, Brendan Overland, Maji Yellow, Redstone MCPC, Comics 1017, James Darty, Monster Rocket, John Luke, Eric Berry, Tyler Brzezinski, Matthew Thorne, Josh Landry, Paramitis, and CPT Tesla. You can support Toku Topics for as little as $1 a month on my Patreon, link in the description below.